thank all of you for coming and doing the work you're doing to inform other people. I'm going to say a lot of things that may bother some of you, but please be patient. I'm not your enemy. I'm going to tell you things that about your society that you may or may not know. I want to say first that the language we speak was designed hundreds of years ago, and it's almost impossible to talk to one another. Although we think we talk to one another, we really repeat a language that's highly insufficient. Whatever you say to other people, it goes in their heads and comes out to fit their society. You don't always communicate with people. So the problem is, can we develop a language that has consistent meaning? Well, if you still don't understand me, sometimes I might say, have a nice weekend. Why don't we say, have a nice life? Why just the weekend? <laughs> Our language, again, is old. Is it possible to devise a language that's not subject to interpretation? When you read the Bible, if you do, it says Jesus meant this. Somebody says that. Oh no, he meant that. The third person says, you're both wrong. This is what he really meant. So you have the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, because it's subject to interpretation. The language of chemistry, mathematics, science, engineering is not subject to interpretation. When a chemist writes a formula, no matter what country it goes to, they interpret it the same way. I'm trying to tell you it's possible to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation. So we really talk at each other rather than to one another. That's a major problem. That's why lawyers exist. They can take language, mold it, reshape it, but you can't do that. Those of you that want to know how to communicate, there are books such as Science and Sanity by Alfred Korzybski, Language and Thought and Action by Hayekawa, The Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. You don't even know this, but the words you use have no communication value. Take junior grade school, for example. When a teacher says to a child, that's wrong, that doesn't tell a child anything. Think about it. That's wrong. What does that tell you? Nothing in particular. And the teacher says, that's not what I told you. That doesn't tell the child anything. So most of our language is empty. Then there's another bullshit word, and that's love. Don't get mad at me. Hear me out. Now, most of us don't like everything we've done in life. I'm sure we don't. We made mistakes. We made false judgments. So sometimes you like yourself, sometimes a little bit, sometimes not at all. So love is a fluctuating thing. Even if you marry somebody and love them, you'll find sometimes you love them very much, a little less. Sometimes, how do I ever get in this situation? <laughs> so love is a fluctuating thing, not a fixed thing. That's why we don't understand what's happening. Sometimes a guy is conditioned by society to like a girl of a particular configuration but he marries a girl of a different configuration, and he's always looking at different configurations. And you think, what the hell's the matter with this guy? Nothing's the matter with him. He was brought up that way. There are no good or bad people. There are no creative people or lazy people. All that is bullshit put out by your country. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. If you were raised by the headhunters of the Amazon, you'd be a headhunter. And if I said to you, doesn't it bother you to have five shrunken heads? You say, yes, my brother has 20. <laughs> so, is he nuts? No, that's normal to his culture. If you were brought up in ancient Rome, assuming you were Christian, the Romans believed in many different gods. And you come up with one god, you must be nuts. So they put you in an arena with a lot of hungry lions, and they'd starve the lions for a week to put on the good show. Then they'd take the clothes off the Christians so the lions could tear at them easy. The whole family would come Saturday and Sunday to see Christians fed the lions. 
and the kids would say, Daddy, can I come next week to see Christians fed the lions? And that is, if you behave yourself. Now, are these people nuts? No. That's normal to that culture. Just as we go to prize fights and watch men punch the heads of other men. All the things we do are stupid and far beyond civilization. We are not civilized yet. That's why you have prisons, police, war, and all the problems you have, unnecessary human suffering, because people don't understand yet. Their schools do not educate people. They teach you to become a cog in the wheel, as Roxanne pointed out. They teach you to become a carpenter, an engineer, an architect. All these are false fields. They have to teach you how to become a generalist, how to understand the history of civilization, which is lacking in all our universities. They'd be shut down in the future, and people would be brought up to become generalists. So they understand human behavior, they understand what makes a person, what gives a person drive. So all of us are brought up to believe there are different kinds of people, which is a lie. That the Japanese mind can't grasp technology. That the Chinese can't understand certain things. And always get a dumb Polak to clean out your cellar. <laughs> and the damn Italians, the wops they brought, the mafia to this country. And all that hatred comes from cheap labor. As a rule, when the Irish first came to this country, they worked for one half the amount Americans worked for. So let's get rid of those damn Irishmen. They're no good. Huh. They took their jobs away. That's why we got mad at them. And during the Depression, at the factory put up a sign, Help Wanted, everybody lined up to get a job. Hundreds of people. And normal Americans, normal means fucked up. Normal Americans would say, let's get the goddamn Wops out of the line. Let's get the goddamn Filipinos out of the line. Because they threaten our jobs. That's why they do that. Racial hatred, hatred is tolerated and brought about. But I want to tell you this. If a normal American baby or a Greek baby or a French baby were brought up in Nazi Germany, and all they see is Heil Hitler, Deutschland over alles, Germany above all. They become Nazis. If you're brought up in America, you become, yes sir, I'm an American and proud of it. Most Americans don't know that George Washington, the first president, had 300 slaves today be arrested as a nut. And the most of the people, Harry Truman, President Truman, was a hat salesman. Real jackass in presidential position. Now, who are these people in government? What is a politician? I don't want you to take my word. I want you to walk over to any politician you know or do not know and ask them, how can you grow food faster without exhausting the soil and feed the hungry? I don't know. How can you make automobiles that don't hit each other? I don't know. How can you make highways safer? I don't know. They don't know anything. Don't take my word for it. Ask them. They really don't know a damn thing, and I mean politicians all over the world. All countries, all, are basically corrupt. If you don't understand what I'm saying, where do you think America got America from? You think the Indians just come on over, enjoy yourself, take all the land you want? No, we killed thousands of Indians. We starved 50 million buffalo to make it tough for the Indians. And the Indians that fought back really tried to take some land back. But the government decided that they wanted to get rid of those aggressive Indians that wouldn't conform to what we wanted. So they offered 10 bucks for every Indian you killed. And the guy walked over and he said, I just killed 10 Indians. The government said, how do we know that? Bring back a piece of the Indian. So they started scalping Americans, not the Indians. And we brought back 10 scalps to collect 10 bucks for every Indian you killed. Americans are no good, the French are no good, the Greeks are no good. All nations are corrupt. They say the sun never sets on England. Where do you think England got all that land from? They took it by killing thousands of people. So, if you don't like the guy next door, 
If you shoot him and miss by one inch, you're not a murderer. If your aim is a little better, you're a murderer if you hit the guy. So today they have guns, machine guns with laser beams. When it's on you and you pull the trigger, bullets come out. If it's a little off, no bullets come out. The guns are getting smarter, soldiers are getting dumber, and they're killing. They're killing machines. We would train soldiers to be problem solvers, send them back to school. How do you bridge the difference between nations? How can we improve agriculture? How can we fight hurricanes, heart disease? This is the real problem, not killing. When you kill people and bomb cities, consider the abortionists. Some people say, gee, that's terrible. They commit abortion, they take a life. If these people were consistently educated, when you have war, you kill pregnant women, children, everybody. Why don't they fight against war? Why just abortionists? There's something dreadfully wrong with all our schools. They have better equipment than ever, the universities, the best, and the wars are getting worse. The atom bomb is considered nothing today compared to the cobalt bomb. It'll kill many more people. Each submarine, I'm talking about America, it's the only country I have information on, has 300 submarines. According to the Navy, each one has more destructive power than all the wars in history. What can you accomplish with that? Then they tell you other things. They tell you things like, be good, be kind. How can you be kind or good? Suppose I have a factory and I turn out things ten times faster than your factory. Same product. If I share that with you, I lose the competitive edge. If I have patents, I deprive people all over the world from making things that make life better. So how can you be decent? So you go to church on Sunday, and what do you do there? You look at the clothes of other people, everybody dresses to outpace the other person. And so when they go to church, what do they do mostly? Bother God. We need a new car. My wife needs a car. I'd like a home in the country, and I'd like this, I'd like that. And they say that God knows everything. That's what they teach you in church. God knows everything. He made every planet, every galaxy. So when I went to church, I insulted the minister by saying, if God knows everything, why did Jesus insult God? He said, I don't remember Jesus insulting God. Well, they crucified Jesus. Just before they crucified him, he looked up and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God said, gee, I didn't know that, thanks. <laughs> you know, if he knows everything, what is Jesus talking to him about? <laughs> what are you talking to him about if he knows everything? Aunt Minnie is sick, she's suffering, please ease the pain. Well, I didn't know about that Aunt Minnie. Okay, so you see, man makes God in his own image. Some jerk that gets angry and says, Noah, build yourself an ark, I'm going to flood the whole area. I don't like the products I turned out. It's going to kill everybody. So Noah is to build an ark. If he took two kinds of every animal, the ark would be about a mile long. Who cleans the shit out of that boat? <laughs> the stories are so ridiculous, they're not even sensible. So when I read the Bible instead of the comic strips, because there's nothing in it that makes sense. God sits on the throne, he makes a man and a woman, puts them in a beautiful garden, and then he has a snake that walks upright, according to the Bible, not me. And the snake says, eat of the fruit of knowledge. And Eve did that, and he kicked them both out and slammed at the gate shut. All loving, all kind God. The contradictions are so thick in the Bible, it's amazing that everybody doesn't see it. Now, in the Bible, if you're religious, it says, thou shalt not kill. It doesn't say you can kill Wednesdays and Thursdays. It says, thou shalt not kill. Then it says, love thine enemy, meaning if a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. And what happens in times of war? What's the matter with these Christians? Larry King once said, what do you think of Christianity, Fresco? This is a great idea. When are they putting it into practice?
frankly, I've never met a Christian that forgives people, that loves their enemy, that turns the other cheek, that has no locks on the door. When a hungry person knocks, they bring him in saying, do unto the others that you have others do unto you. I've never met a Christian. Never found one anywhere I've traveled. So uh, the point is, all of us need security. All people all over the world need clean air, clean water, arable land, and a relevant education. What does relevant education mean? To study agriculture, nature, how we relate to nature, how we relate to one another, to give us the tools to live in accordance with what we want, not what they want you to be. They want you to be patriotic. That means they want to control you. Patriotism, Einstein said, is a disease. But he couldn't say that publicly. When he came to this country, he was a socialist to America. And they said, don't talk socialism, they'll ship your ass back to Germany. So he wouldn't talk about it. Einstein, I once asked him whether he felt uh, that social design would be prevalent for all people, useful. He said he was a socialist, he really didn't know the anatomy of social design. He said, are you interested in mathematics? I said, yes, as a tool, but he didn't really know the process of social design. I asked communists, how will you prevent corruption in the future? They said, well, when that time comes, this is the Great Depression, that time comes, we'll work on it. I said, well, how will you house the millions of people? Well, uh, uh, when that time comes, we'll work on that. I said, well, let's start a technical branch of the Communist Party or Socialist Party or any party to make life secure for all people so no one can become corrupt. They said, you're deviating from the teachings of Marx, you'll have to leave. I was not trying to deviate or disrupt communists. I was trying to give them a method of solving problems. So I joined, at that time, during the Depression, I joined technocracy because they talked about using science and government. But there were no blacks in the organization. And I said, how come there's no blacks? They said, well, let them start their own section. I said, well, what about Orientals? Just that the oriental mind can't grasp technology. Well, of course, as you know today, they lead the world in robotics. So all our thoughts about different kinds of people are lies. They're not real. We have to understand that all people tend to love their kids. All people want their kids to be better educated. All people want to know about nutrition. So let's say the drug companies were really sincere and they found out that celery juice lowers blood pressure. You can't make any money selling celery juice, could you? But you can get two bucks for every pill you sell. So there was a book written many years ago. I also like to know how many people ever heard of it. A hundred million guinea pigs. How many of you heard of that book? It should have been in every library. It's not. What did a hundred million guinea pigs talk about? the lies put out by the drug companies. And the people of America was the best seller, by the way, in America years ago. And they demanded that the government put in a Pure Food and Drug Administration to check the claims of the drug companies. And they did, they got that in. Now it's run by people of the drug company. Everything becomes corrupt. Everything we touch. So Oppenheimer, went to visit Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, and said, look, now that we have an atom bomb, why don't you demonstrate it about 30 miles out at sea so the Japanese can see it, so you won't have to drop it over Japan. Give them a chance to surrender. Harry Truman said, get out of my office. I never want to see you guys again. And he dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, because he was a jackass. Most presidents are very stupid people. They know nothing about ecology, the evolution of society, or have ever, no politician, has ever increased the agricultural yield, made automobiles safer, airplanes safer. What the hell are they doing there? How do they get the job? 
there's something dreadfully wrong with education. The people in Washington, I can only talk about them, I believe all countries are similar. The people in Washington should know more about human behavior, the latest technologies. They tell you if you want freedom, write your congressman. Why do you have to write him? He should know all those things. When you fly on an airplane, you don't have to write the pilot, say you've been flying at an angle for half an hour, straighten up. They know their business. The same for government. They should know everything about modern technology, human behavior. When you put a man in prison, say he stole a watch that cost $150, and it's the fourth time he committed that crime. So you put him in jail for seven years, that's a hell of a lot of watches you can get. Figure the cost of that. Feeding him medical care for seven years, let him have the watch. It's much cheaper to give people things they need than to kill them. It's much cheaper. Think of men in jail for life. You know how much that cost? They're worried about the fact that he tried to rob a jewelry store of maybe three or four hundred dollars. It's always cheaper to feed people. And when they go to jail, I can assure you, they don't come out any better. They call them correctional institutes. They don't even know how to correct people. They're not people trained in that area. Then you got a bunch of people they call psychologists. I hope there's none here today. And psychiatrists that adjust you to this fucked up culture. How can you adjust people to this culture if you're sane? Do you understand what I mean? So even psychologists and psychiatrists are part of the culture. So is religion. Jesus needs money. Jesus doesn't need anything. God doesn't need anything. They also try to tell you that God so loveth the world that he gave his only begotten son. According to the Bible, it says they crucified Christ, he arose and ascended into heaven. Where's the sacrifice? Think about it. So, we don't think about what we read, we just read and we just yak. And so, when we're asked to vote for somebody, we vote for somebody that fits the patterns we've been brought up to accept. Now, during the question period, please, don't be polite. If I say anything you don't understand, say, I don't get it. And if I fail to answer your question, say, you didn't answer my question. Don't be polite. So at the question period, we will examine some of the ideas, and I want you to ask all kinds of naughty questions. Don't accept a thing I say. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to listen to what I say. If it makes sense, do it. If you like the Venus Project, when you leave here, if you don't talk to other people about it, nothing will happen. So if you like what we stand for, look, it's not perfect. It's just a lot better than the society you live in. And it'll continue to get better. There are no final frontiers. People think I'm a utopian. I believe that you can make the best of all possible worlds. I don't. Even if I design a city that works, that city will be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. If you make a statue of me and put it in a city, that holds people back. <laughs> In order to move forward, you have to look at things, examine it, improve it, and move on. History is very poor. You don't learn much from it. If you study history exclusively, you won't come up with new ideas. We want to move on. There's no such thing as utopia. Every city I design would be the best I know up to now. And as time goes on, you learn more and the city changes. Nothing can be frozen and kept that way. Everything keeps changing. There are no final frontiers. That's what's the matter with heaven. It's fixed. Everything is the same way. Just consider this. If you went to heaven and you looked down and saw starving kids in Africa, war on earth, would heaven be a peaceful place for you? Absolutely not. There were a bunch of angels that turned against God, so we kicked them all out. They're called the fallen angels. If he didn't have peace up there, how the hell are you going to have it down here? <laughs> you have to read your Bible, and you have to be ruthlessly honest.
If you're not honest, it won't work. It says in the Bible, judge not, lest you be judged. That means don't judge anybody. You don't know enough about what made him that way. It also says in the Bible, therefore, by the grace of God, go I. That's anybody you see in a wheelchair, blind, all of us. That can happen to all of us. They don't know what to do about it. In 1927, I came up with a little idea, which I got from bats. Bats can fly at night and not hit anything. How do they do it? By sound. So I made a little gadget that would fit over a person's ear and generate sound waves so you can hear an open door even though you're blind. You can hear an object in front of you by sound feedback. So we can build things in all cities so the blind, the blind don't need that white stick or a dog or anything like that. In the meantime, we'll work on artificial systems of vision. I think that human beings can solve any problem if you don't understand me, I'm not upholding Germany this time. Some people think I do. We formed a blockade to prevent the Germans from getting rubber. But they had enough technicians to make synthetic rubber. So they made all the rubber for their airplanes, everything, out of their own chemistry. So with technicians, not in charge, understand, I don't want to see science in charge of government or technicians. What I want to see is their assignment to problems such as agriculture. When you, when you can grow food twice as fast on the soil, you exhaust the soil. So we want to know how to grow food faster without exhausting the soil. The United States Army dumped 65 tons of nerve gas into the ocean off the coast of Miami, near the Gulf Stream. How can you love the country if the army did that? They don't know what they're doing. They say, we want you to dump nerve gas. Yes, sir. We don't want obedient people anymore. We want you to understand what's happening. We don't want you to vote for a senator or some other jackass. They are incompetent, all of them. I want you to understand everything that you have today is your electric lights, your airplanes, your automobiles. You had nothing to do with them. You got them just being born in a country that had that technology. You got it for nothing. I don't think any of you here worked on the electric light or radio or television. Very few people. So you got all that for nothing. Does it hurt you? Of course not. They said, well, you don't want to give people things for nothing, do you? This kid said that to me at Princeton University. Fresco, you want to give people things for nothing. So I said, are you paying your way through college? He said, no, my dad is. I said, that hurt you? This kid said to me, he still doesn't believe anybody ought to get things for nothing. So I said to him, well, as I understand, your father is wealthy. If he dies, you want his money to go to the heart fund and the cancer fund, but not to you, because you don't believe anybody ought to get anything for nothing. He said, just a minute now. Everybody wants things for nothing. You got the earth for nothing, you were born here, beautiful scenery, clouds, you didn't make any of that. Does it hurt you? Of course not. But when you're born in a polluted world with smog in the air and automobile pollution, you say, I guess that's the way it is. It isn't that way. It's because the people in charge of government are totally incompetent. So what you really want is a world free free of burden, pain, prisons, police, crime. Can we do that? The church has been trying to do it for years. They don't know how. They have no idea of how to say, be kind, be good. How do you do that? So I wanted my children, two of them, to learn how to read. So I never taught them how to read. I'd open a book at night and I'd read to them in bed. I read to them about things kids are interested in. This happened to be my son. He was about four years old. I was reading about dinosaurs. And I said, when the two dinosaurs met, I go, I said, that's all for tonight. I close it. He said, what happened when the dinosaurs met? I said, look, if you learn to read, you can figure it out for yourself. <laughs> and so I gave him a reason to want to read. Don't just teach him to read. Teach them a reason for wanting to learn mathematics. Teach, us, teach you how to read the Dickie Dare on, and his sheep. 
On the way he met a cow. Moo, moo, said the cow. What is that crap? <laughs> and then they have in America, I don't know how much you have it here, the Mickey Mouse Club. Now what the hell happens if you condition kids to join the Mickey Mouse Club? You make a bunch of pinheads. Do you understand? Kids want to know everything. How do airplanes fly? Daddy, what makes the light go on? He said, I don't know that. Daddy usually doesn't know anything, and congressmen know less. <laughs> so I'm saying everything that you have is technical. Think about it. If we took away technology, if you shut down Boulder Dam tomorrow, all the food and all the refrigerators from L.A. to San Francisco would fail. All the food would rot away. Everything that you have is technology. If you'd shut down the power projects, men would have to pull cars and boats. They did it in the Volga River. They had to pull freighters. Men, slaves, were whipped to do that. Slavery was normal in the old days. And kings felt that they were put here to rule over people. People in my position like to think that they're here to try to make the world a better place. Divine wisdom guides them. Look, divine wisdom doesn't guide anybody. When Christians fed the lions, they prayed like hell. The Jews in concentration camp prayed and they were burned. In Salem, Massachusetts, if a woman spoke up and she didn't quite agree with everything, she was burned alive as a witch. Now here's what you didn't know. I'm talking about the United States. Women, hundreds of them were burned alive because they thought about things, just a little different. But that what you didn't know is for every witch you found, you inherited their bank account and their land. So it was a good job looking for witches in the old days. The more you can find, the more money you got, and free. So here you have a world that's sicker than shit. And when I say that, I mean it. I mean that the world you live in is consisted of stupid people, including the military. The Pentagon and Washington think that they're there to defend the country. Whatever a man can think of, some other body can think of a way around that. You can't secure yourself. You think that you go to an airport, you put your luggage down, they x-ray it, and you're all right. I can design clothing that gives off nerve gas there are other ways around anything a person could think of. I wouldn't do that, of course. I wouldn't work on weapons. When I was drafted in the army, the first thing they said is, can you make a bomb fresco that goes sideways instead of up? I said, I have no idea how to do that. It says, cast ye not pearl before swine. People are not educated yet. They should not have weapons of mass destruction. They don't know how to use it. They should have technology that enhances all human life. This is what religion tries to do. I would say that the Venus Project is the nearest thing to the brotherhood of humanity. So I want to try to tell you a little more about people. If you were raised in Nazi Germany as a baby, if you never saw anything else, it'd be Heil Hitler. If you're raised in France, La Tour Eiffel, your facial expressions, everything. If you're raised in the South in America, you speak with a Southern accent. If I say, stop speaking with a Southern accent, you can't. And you'd say, well, I'm going to get me a nigger and I'm going to kick his ass. Is that you speaking or is that picked up from your environment? If you take a normal boy and bring him up with six or ten very effeminate women, women speak differently than men. They move their hands a lot and facial expressions are different, more like I'm moving now. So if you just were brought up with those words, a boy would move just like a woman. If you were brought up in Italy, you'd say, come on, they eat, there's a good food. See, because even that is reflection. If you're brought up in Germany, again, it's Deutschland over alles. If you're brought up in, in any other country, you might say, you know where the person was brought up from by the way they speak. How are you, mate? You know where that guy comes from Australia. How are you, mate? Well, you'd speak that way, your facial expression would be that way, and you use words like individuality. There's no such thing. 
Everybody reflects their culture. If you lived in France 10 years, you moved to Germany, you lived there 10 years, you speak with a German-French accent. Not a thing you can do about it. So we reflect our culture, all of us. So when they say, think for yourself, you can't. Because you think as an American, or a Frenchman, or a German, or a Greek, or an Italian. So really, when Germans speak, they speak when they come to this country. They speak and say, well, I give you some idea of what happened. That's the way they speak. They pick it up. It's a course between German and English. I worked for a guy named Ernst Judet, who was an ace of World War I. He shot down 71 planes. Since I worked for him, I said, how did you shoot down 71 airplanes? Maybe if he shot down five or six, that's possible. But how can you shoot down 70? one airplane. He said, what's very easy, Frasco? That's the way he spoke. He said, I would fly above the squadrons and I'd look for a rookie, a bad pilot that didn't know how, and I'd pick him off. So is he a good man? Is he kind? Is he human? Same with Teddy Rickenbacker. They always fly above the squadron and look for guys that can't fly too well and pick them off. That gives you a lot of medals, a lot of X's on your fuselage. So when you're brought up, you're brought up, so a lot of people go to church and says, thou shalt not kill. And so it's hard to get people to enlist in the army. So they give Japanese or Chinese Americans false teeth. And they make a movie by Frank Capra called Why We Fight. And it shows these Japanese kids raping a woman and the enlistment goes up 75%. You have to teach hatred to have war to, go, war to be a working system. And army men, unfortunately, 10 years after the war, that's the most exciting time of their life. And they always go back and they join the American Legion and they talk about the days they shot these goddamn slanty eye bastards. And the Germans were called Krauts, not human beings. So we shot them too. See? So soldiers are killing machines. And if you want a world without war, people have to be educated to understand that all people need the same thing, good food, healthy living, a relevant education, not killing. Because war only produces hatred over the years. They remember that you kill their kids, their parents, and they want to get even with you. And some people say to me, I'm just imitating them. Why are these goddamn North Koreans building rockets and why are these Chinese building big armies? They're a threat to us. But again, I don't want you to take my word for this, there's a newspaper in England called The Telegraph. The London Telegraph. And in that newspaper, they ran a headline about seven years ago. The US intends to bomb seven countries, nuclear bomb, sneak attack, on seven countries, it names North Korea, China, all the countries we don't like, headlined in the Telegraph. You haven't seen that, so write for it. Don't take my word for it. When you do that, if China said, we intend to bomb England, France, United States, and some other country, we would arm to the tooth. That's why they're all building nuclear weapons. They're afraid of us, afraid of America. You didn't know they ran that, so you say, why are these damn Chinese doing that? Why are these damn North Koreans doing that? They're doing because they're scared of the United States. And the United States, are their intentions good? They may be, but they're stupid people. Even if they intended to do that, they should not have released it. It was released by the Pentagon, according to the Telegraph. So there's your reason. People behave as they've been conditioned, as they manage news and turn you off from things they think you ought not to hear. Like the theory of evolution was held back for a long time. And in all the parks in America, or most of them, there are cannons, war tanks, airplanes. There should be statues of people that increase food, that did wonderful changes in medicine, wash your hands, retain cleanliness. They used to cut cadavers and then go on right on and do childbirth with surgery. And the women would die of childbirth fever 
That was because they did cutting with cadavers, never washed their hands, and the doctor that told them to wash their hands was kicked out of the university because he told them to wash their hands. So who the hell are you to tell us what to do? So everything new was fought, women's rights, child labor, the issue of children in factories. Of course, it's a little before your time. But people marched to get the children out of the factories and they had rotten eggs thrown at them. When you fought for women's rights, the same thing. They had rotten eggs thrown at you. What do you mean women? Women are only good for two things, you know. So they had notions about women. You know, women can't learn to be architects and engineers. Women are just good to produce babies and cook for the old man. Well, all this crap is disappearing, but every inch of the way of progress was fought. Just remember that. Nothing comes easy. People are now producing articles about the Venus Project because we're better known now. They said, Fresco gets his money from the Vatican or the Rothschild family or this banking institute. I don't have any money. Fresco has two Mercedes. I don't even have a car. So anyway, they will spread whatever rumors they have to, to keep in power. And that's what you're up against. Whenever you do anything new or different, instead of people saying, you know, that's an interesting thing, let me think about it, you know, they get mad at you because you're upsetting the apple cart. And that's what it's about. We have a tough job ahead, all of us. If you wish to live in a world without war, poverty, unemployment, hunger, human suffering, you have to talk to other people. If you do nothing, I can assure you nothing will happen. So I think I can open this portion to questions. So Roxanne and I will take questions from any one of you. Thank you again. <laughs>